This is the plaintiff, Amy Kaplan. She says she rented an apartment from the defendants, and once she moved in, she realized nothing worked in the place. She called to complain. The defendants left her a vulgar, disgusting message, telling her they were sick of her belly aching, and she made a report with the cops. Bottom line, she moved out because she felt threatened and unsafe and is now suing for the return of the $5,000 she's owed. These are the defendants, Joseph and Bobby Russo. They say the plaintiff was so annoying, the minute she moved in, she could even aggravate a dead person. That's right, she nitpicked about everything. And they think she's some sort of professional renter that moves from place to place to save on paying rent. The woman stiffed them by breaking her lease. And if she thinks she's gonna get any money awarded today, she's crazy. They're accused of turning out a tenant. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff says she moved out of her apartment because she says that it was not a good one and she felt unsafe. Uh, but the defendant says she is a scam artist who knows how to avoid paying rent. It's the case of you're like the Picasso of deadbeats. Thank you, Douglas. Amy Kaplan, you are suing Joseph and Bobby Russo? For your former landlords for $4,620.48, which is double your security deposit, which they didn't return, plus attorney consultation, moving expenses, and emotional distress and loss of use of a washer dryer. Tell me what happened. Um, good afternoon, Your Honor. <clears throat> in um, April of 2015, I was looking for a place to live. I was living in the same complex as the Russos. I'd been there for two years. So um, I saw an ad on Craigslist for a unit in that complex, which you almost never see. And I called and left a message and didn't hear back. I called later in the day because I know you, they you go have really to get, fast. You're going to have to get so specific okay. so far back because we're never going to get out of here. <laughs> so you <laughs> meet them, right. you rent their place, and right. you're paying how much? 1700 Okay. And you pay first, last, and security? I did. All right. And yep. how long did you live there before you decided to leave or they decided for you to leave? Um, I was there for about three weeks. What happened? Um, well, we went back and forth about a washer and dryer unit and um, a toilet that was running, which is not a big deal. Why, what do you mean by you went back and forth? Um, the Russos didn't really want to fix it or they didn't think it was broken. The washer and dryer? Okay. It didn't work. And I, to fast forward, I emailed Mr. Russo and I said, washer and dryer's not working again. And he left a horrific phone message. Do you have it? I do. Can I hear the message? And the essence of it is? Um, if you don't like it, get the hell out. And you have reached Joe Russo. Amy, I'm sick and tired of your complaints. Call me. If you don't want to be there, you can get the hell out. You understand me? That's it? Oh, I, I really thought it was going to be a lot juicier. <laughs> to me? I mean, get the hell out is rude and everything. He's angry, but I mean, I thought it was going to be a lot meatier than that, to it be was honest. A, it was a huge... I thought horrific. And you have not seen horrific. <laughs> Apparently, I've seen a lot more of horrific than you have. I All right, so it was upsetting, obviously, to hear something like that. And so what do you do? It was such a switch from any other conversation we had. What had you been complaining about that would... Did, was you think he was having a bad day or it, had... I have no idea, Your Honor. Okay. It was so, just but, the washer dryer. Okay, so if this... So, okay, so why did you leave? What happened after that? There were a couple of things that happened in the process of ha dealing with this washer and dryer that were made me very uncomfortable. Um, when the electrician came, Mr. Russo came in the house. The electrician had already been there. He was taking things apart. Mr. Russo went to go walk to the kitchen. And I said, Joe, don't touch anything. Don't, because there are breakers that he kept trying to fix who that did, were broken. Breakers who kept trying to fix? Mr. Russo. OK. And you're telling him not to touch something in his don't own house? Touch, what? I said, don't touch the breakers. The guy has all the stuff open. There were oh, like oh, open oh, wires oh, and okay, stuff. He's like, no, oh, never mind. And then Mr. Russo did whatever, and then he came in the room where the washer dryer was, and the guy just rammed him. He's like, what are you doing? You could have killed me. <laughs> that kind of thing where, like, the rules Honey, did apply. you decide to leave or did they kick you out? Which happened? I decided to leave. Okay. So you, was, like, did you have a written lease or did you not? I did. Okay. How long was your lease for? Two years. All right. So you notify him that you're leaving? Yes. When do you notify him that you're leaving? <clears throat> uh, May 31st. I gave him the 30-day notice. Okay. So you left at the end of June? 
I left on July 3rd. You ended up staying over a few days. I couldn't get into my new days. place. Right. I okay, how come? You, why did you end up staying? I couldn't get into the new place until July 3rd. Well, I let the, him know. the I'm next shooting. tenant can't get into this place either. But right. Uh, did you end up re-renting the unit? Yes, on the 15th instead of the 1st because okay. she wasn't out and she didn't give us the keys back until the 11th of July. Okay, and why did you wait to give the keys back? I forgot I had the keys. I really did. Okay. And he emailed me. Well, and I, I mean, sent I don't know right how you out. forget that you have keys to a place that you're turning over. That's like, how does one forget that? Let me ask you a question, Mr. Russo. Not your best day when you left that message. How come? What were you sick of already? Okay, so in May, before she even moved in, she says to my wife, uh, I'd like to have the place cleaned. My wife looked at it, and she said, yeah, it could use a cleaning. So I sent a cleaning crew in there, $150. Not a problem. Then she wants it painted. And I said to my wife, I said, this don't need to be painted. She said, look, she wants, she's a young professional. She two-year lease. She'll probably be here a long time, but probably have to paint it anyway some, down the road. I said, fine, $1,700. Wow. Okay, so she moves in. Now the saga begins. Okay. She calls me and says the toilet bowl is running constantly. Now, Your Honor, I got to tell you something. In Fairfield, Connecticut, when you, uh, when the landlord rents something out, you got to have a certificate of occupancy. Each and every time that you rent it out. Yes, and they come in, they do everything. They even flush the bowl. Well, and that I was expect the first... them to flush the bowl. If they're going to have a rule that they're expecting things, exactly. I would expect them to flush the bowl. So we had the... Uh, the certificate. The certificate. All right, but something could happen in the meantime. So she complained that the toilet was running. So yeah. did you inspect it? My son and I went over, because I'm not a plumber. He is. Oh, he, well, that's We went there, and it was nothing. He flushed it. It flushed. He said, Dad, he said, it fills up on a little slow. Right. He said, if that's what's bugging her, I'll go to Home Depot and get this valve. Mm -hmm. He did. We put it in. Okay. He flushed it five, six times. Worked perfectly. Okay. Two days later, another email. I'm not satisfied with the, with the commode. Well, she's not satisfied with the commode, meaning what? What was wrong with the commode after the, after the uh, fix? It just kept running, and I own property, and I know that you don't let stuff go. Okay. I didn't want anything to Did you, you to didn't happen to, to video the, the running of it? No, so, I don't. Okay. Can I see the picture that you were showing me? And can I see the email, I have please? a lot of pictures. Okay, what else did she complain about? Then she said the stackable washer dryer is not working. So I said, okay, fine. I call a service guy. He finds that the, the 220 line that was attached to the wall is now on the floor, and there's two screws in the box. What does that mean? What is, what is that evidence of? What do you want what me to What he said was the line must have worked its way off the, the wall, and somehow these two screws found their way into this little opening in the box. Are you trying to say she did something? I don't know. I don't know. It just seems strange to me that two screws can fall off a wall and both of them find their way into the box. Okay. One, maybe I say, okay, it's a freak accident. So what do you mean? That she pulled it or did something? I don't know. Okay. Maybe. Okay. So anyway, he fixes it. Then I get this email. All American was here yesterday. The unit is working. I will not be using it before I leave. I had already given him notice. Who are you spiting? Me or you? <laughs> I mean, I, were, I go over there. I have a serviceman over there twice. We get it fixed. I ain't going to use it. Okay, now by this time she had given you notice because you'd left that nasty message. All this was on basically the same day, 6-1, yeah. And I told her, I said, look, Amy, I don't want you out of here. I said, okay, I lost my temper because you're aggravating, okay? <laughs> I says, but I, I'm not trying to get you out of here. You're welcome to stay, okay? okay? Then I get a call from her lawyer. Okay. And he says to me, Mr. Russo, would you consider letting her out of the lease? I said, no, I can't do that. Because then I'm liable for a fine. Right. And I told him, I said, I, I told him the whole story. Right. All the stuff I did. What did he say? He said, Mr. Russo, you deserve kudos. Okay. <laughs> I said, thank you. I said, you're her lawyer? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's right. what he so said. So the bottom line is that. you leave, but you don't leave until July 3rd. Did you pay July rent? Um, no, but I, out of the, the, um, Deposit I took out for those three days in the well, accounting. Well, you don't get to do that. You don't get to take out for three days. You're, you're there a, a minute past the time you should be. You're paying rent for a month. That's the law. You don't get to say, ah, I, don't, I think I'll take another eight days and uh, I'll just pay, I'll let you know when I'm leaving when it's convenient for me. That's not how it works. So who takes advantage of who more? Landlords or tenants? I'm going back to you. I would definitely say landlords. They Why would you definitely say that? 
because they impose their will, they can do whatever they want since the tenant is paying the rent and is under contract. Okay, that's a fair point, but that's also part of the deal. Who takes advantage of who more? Going back to you. Uh, tenants do. Why do tenants? Um, they should just take advantage of, you know, going around, doing things that... It's not their... They don't own the place, so they kind of... Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I got your point, going inside the courtroom. Now, did you ever send her a letter within 30 days after the termination of her lease telling her, I'm keeping your security deposit and here's why? No, I told her verbally and I no, told her lawyer not good enough. You know that the law requires, if you are going to keep her security deposit, that you state in a letter in writing to her, that you state in writing to her, why it is that you're keeping it, itemizing it, right? And there's a penalty because you're in one of the strict states. You have 30 days to do that. Okay. But if you don't write that letter, there's a big penalty in your state to the landlord. And that is that before we start doing the math, the security deposit is doubled. She's right about that. Okay, so what have we got? You're right that we start from the doubled figure, which is 3,400. Number one, you owe July rent. Now we start from 1,700. Okay, you are suing for an attorney consultation. He has to, you want him to pay your $100 attorney consultation. Why would he pay it? You broke the lease. Okay. Yeah, okay. Just so that. no. Uh, you want him to, and her to pay $770 of moving expenses. Why would they pay your moving expenses? You broke the lease. Uh, $500 for emotional distress. Tell me about that one. Um, that may not be a disturbing message to some people, but it was disturbing to me. But because a guy left a nasty message and said, you get the hell out of there, that means that he has to pay you $500? No, I just, they no, said to they, ask right, for everything. No, the answer's no. All right, now, you actually, you had said that you rented it from the middle of the month, right? Yes, I, okay. and I have that lease here if you want to see it. Yeah, I do. I want to see it. Okay. Did you and rent it for the same amount or more? There was no CO. No, the same amount. The same amount or more? Okay. Did you have to get another CO? Yes. yes. Are you kidding me? Did yeah, you have every to pay time for another some, CO? Every time yep. somebody moves in. There was no CO because I went to the town and I got the last three COs. The oh, people that were in before There's me were only there the for eight months. Hello. Judge, Her name is on it. <laughs> Your name is on it. I don't know what they were talking about then. Listen, listen, good riddance, right? Hello. Like, it, you know, this is not a good mix, you two. It is not a good mix. No. Oh, you Best got that right. Yeah, okay. All right. But I, I'm still bound to follow the law, and if you didn't follow it, I still have to do the math the way the law requires you to do like it. Like I said, you're the boss. Got it. <laughs> okay. And let's not forget the $250 that she owes me for the move-in, move-out fee. Association. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't discussed that yet. No, let's talk about that now. I'm about to rule. Don't you see me? Okay. Oh, <laughs> what is it that you, what's the move-in, move-out fee that she cost you? Right here. When a tenant moves in, they got to pay $125. When okay. they move out, they got to pay another $125. Okay, no, is that something that... You pay $250 up front. You pay the $250 up front. Okay. Move in, move out. Is that in her lease that she's supposed to pay that $250? Yes. You got yes. the lease? I gave you, you the lease. Did you ever pay the $250? I... No. I never got a bill, or they never asked me for oh, it. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah, it's, 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 okay. it's in the It's on the right, right, leash. Right, right, it's highlighted. Everybody calm down. Yeah. Everybody calm down. Hey, this is what I put up with for two months. Oh, okay, oh all right, God. all right. Okay, the 17... Unbelievable. When I talked about how much rent is gone, it shouldn't. I shouldn't have said 1700 because you already mitigated your damages by having somebody in there for the second half of July, so you don't get double rent for the second half of July. So just hold on one second. All right. So we start with the 3400 We subtract half a month's rent, which is what you were out. We subtract $26 for the other CO. We subtract 250 that was owed according to the lease. Any other damages that you have? The July rent. Did you remember? It's this is July rent. I subtracted 850 oh, for the yeah, July okay, rent yeah. for the half that you never oh, got. Because okay. right. you, know, you had a renter the other half. Right. What right. else? Anything else? Other than all the agita that she caused me, no. <laughs> yes, and agita is not actionable. <laughs> Otherwise, I would be a very rich woman indeed. For Italians, it's actionable. Okay. Believe me. For Italians, it's a way of life. Okay? That's true, right. too. My name is Russo. What can I tell okay. you? Okay. Ms. Kaplan, uh, based on, and Mr. Russo and Ms. Russo, based on what I am looking at, um, it's as follows then. It's 3400 for not writing that letter. Very important. You have to know this and make it part of your jobs as a landlord. 850 for half a month's rent. You don't get to just pay for the days you chose to stay. Mm -hmm. All right? And the only reason it's 850 it would have been 1700 if you couldn't rent it out that month. $26 that you cost them in a new, because you broke the lease, $26 that you cost them in the new CO, $250, that's a moving thing that's right in your contract. Mm -hmm. That means that the defendant is left owing the plaintiff the sum of $2,274. Good luck, folks. How could that be? All right, both sides, both sides. Yeah. All right, how's your Rajada? Not good. <laughs> <laughs>
No, I mean, the, the judge is, you know, she, she has to go by the law, you know. And the aggravation is over. Like she said, best thing ever happened to me was to get rid of this one. Yeah. So it was all good for you then, no matter what it costs. Let me tell you, I had a tent in there one time, eight years. The woman called me one time. This one was in there two months. She called me 18 times. Uh -huh. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. My <riddance. laughs> All right, and so um, the law works somewhat for you here. What's your, what's your feeling on this outcome? Oh, I think it was uh, was probably what I expected. I were you really intimidated by him? Um, a little bit, really? yeah. Really? And I, as a social worker, I teach women to not take crap from people and mm -hmm. verbal abuse, so I have to do the same. Mm -hmm. you taught him a lesson here? No. Did you? <laughs> That's All right, possible. Harvey. Hey, here's the thing. Landlords have to follow the letter of the law when it comes to security. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.